I always go back to a sentence from Serge Danet, which says, which sort of I use as a guideline, no? Which says, um, cinema tirelessly touch, helps me to touch with my gaze the distance at which the other one begins. So all of the films I make are a way to, or a tool actually, to assess these distances, no? So I always wanted to make an animal documentary because I've traveled extensively great distances to make films. But with an animal documentary, what I wanted to do is try to understand the distance between us and animals somehow to be the greatest one. Because since the division between nature and culture, which is the base of modernity, we have made this distance probably the greatest one, no? So I wanted to assess that distance um, and work on this convention of representation, which is very peculiar in wildlife films. So right at the beginning of the film, the only thing you hear is, in fact, that sentence that you just said, which is, nature doesn't tell stories. Um, so immediately the film is set against these conventions, and these conventions are anthropomorphism, stage actions, um, um, you know, new techniques that sort of breaks the barrier between you and the animal. Um, so on set with the director of photography, we had long conversations um, to understand how we were going to use micro photography um, and um, high speed frame um, filming techniques, which we needed because the bees, of course, move very fast. So um, the conventions are to use 30 frames per second or 72 or 56 or even 300 frames per second, which will help you to make images where you actually see the flap of the wings of a bee, right? So we, we sort of raised that question, which was what would be the limit of visibility that we want to give of the bees and we chose to use 36 frames per second which is the lowest film rate that you could actually frame rate that you get actually used so that you would um, allow the viewer to to somehow perceive the bees but not completely see them no the, the other thing that we discussed on set which um, is hugely part of the conventions of animal documentary is how close should we bring the viewer um, to the animal? No? So what kind of lens should we use? And we decided on set to use, um, to set a distance, which would be one meter 20 between us and the camera, and to film the moments we were actually um, you know, measuring, literally measuring this distance between the crew and the camera, so that the film would sort of resemble uh, you know, the, or imitate the, the, the gaze of a flaneur um, instead of trying to bring, you know, the eyes of the viewer so close to the insects, the bees, that in fact it puts the viewer in a position where he isn't normally, no? So that's why the film starts like that. So it, it's the only thing said and heard. Um, and we stayed very factual on set with with the bees which took us huge amounts of time because they you know bees are like filming kids no you, you just can't make them do exactly what you want them to do so and so the film is really about the, that distance between the crew which was part of the film if we needed to film you know the distance between us and the bees and in fact the film is about exactly what is in between us and the bees um, so that it would be more realistic and more comprehensive, no? I, I think, so we were very lucky enough that the bees swarmed out of the beehive, went to the nearest tree, and then we waited for them to swarm out and to disappear into the forest. Um, all that stayed very, very factual. And the idea was to find the distance at which the animal world would keep its enigma instead of trying to do what wildlife documentary does, which is to explain you know, their behavior or um, to film them so close so you would be brought to a place where you shouldn't be or you, your eyes wouldn't go. So that's why that sentence was um, essential to immediately set the film against 
any other wildlife documentaries. What I'm really looking for is trying to, to invent like a positive regime of images where an image is not only built through and for the information it carries, but it also absorbs everything that is sort of out of frame, no? And that is, that is a very difficult thing to do when at the same time you're trying to deconstruct the way you're looking at things. I think the only thing that or rather, many, the many things that anthropology has taught me is first um, to structure my way of thinking, of course, but more so it sort of taught me that I could inv invent um, like methods of, um, I would say, investigations. No, so I would I would try to to invent my own way to actually. Like, try to break the standards and try to on my own way to try to find and understand why I'm looking at things this way how I could approach something in a different way so that's what my anthropology studies have taught me and effectively I think that sometimes sometimes I like to summarize my work but maybe it doesn't fall always in the same pocket as anthropology of images no we're trying to sort of understand why, how and why certain images are made and how they are the vehicle, they are vehicle to a cultural frame. I'd def definitely like to keep on doing animal documentary, yes. Um, I think Apicola was also a p peculiar moment because I've always had the project to do this film, but I was looking for a director of photography for a long time who could do this with me, who wasn't somebody who was working with the BBC. And, and um, so it took me years actually to find someone. And once I had found someone, it, it, we, he you know, asked me to come to Austria because he had his own beekeeper. Like I, I had found a director of photography who was also very passionate about bees. So that sort of helped, of course, the film a lot. But I've been looking for somebody to do this film for about four or five years. So it was a long stretch. So other film documentaries, yes, definitely. Um, I have in mind a, f a feature film about, um, it's not exactly an animal documentary, it's more of um, a fiction film. And the story is about um, a parrot. It's actually a real story. It's about a parrot who'd witness a murder and who's then taken into trial. Um, it's 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 a story that happened in the 60s in America. It actually there was a B movie that was created on and on after, you know, this this story had happened and it's a very interesting story because animals in middle ages used to have rights which they don't have anymore now. Um so within the frame of this modern time to think that an animal could be taken to trial even more so a parrot because he's the only one animal who has, you know, the ability of speech, I thought it was a very good subject that I want to, that I, I'll be working in in the next few years. I'm already working on another feature. So that one is a, is kind of like the next step. But yes, um, definitely it's a subject. I'm very intrigued in this, in our relationship to animals and how we have culturally kind of pushed them back. Like we are definitely separated from what we call n nature as opposed to culture. Um, and I'm very interesting in that because I don't think there's that much of a distance really, in fact. <laughs>